Hello, my beautiful people of Africa. We bless the Creator once again for an opportunity to be alive. We thank the Creator for the sufficiency of grace that keep us going. We praise the Creator for the continent of Africa. We praise the Creator for all Africans uh, in diaspora. And we bless the Creator for all Africans home base. Uh, this once again is your boy and your host Kwame, the African child. And I welcome you to Africa, my heritage TV. As usual, you know what Africa, my heritage TV is standing for. We are here purposely for Africa. We are here to promote Africa. We are here to rebrand Africa. We are here to repackage Africa and make sure that whatever has the African name, whatever has the African tag can be sold to the international world. That is a sole motto for this platform by name, Africa My Heritage TV. We are also here to make sure that we can try to connect all Africans in diaspora so that together, as we are living in the Western world and leveraging on opportunities that we are having here, we can as much as learn from these opportunities and when the right time presents itself, we can go back home to replicate the same thing there. So we are here for Africa. We are here for our beautiful continent. As usual, Africa is our pride. Africa is our heritage. We got no other continent beside Africa. No matter how hard Africa is becoming, no matter the difficulty of condition in Africa, no matter the harshness of situation in Africa, it is still our mother continent. It is still the place we are hearing from. So we cannot turn our back on Africa. And we have to make sure that we can reposition ourselves. We have to make sure that when the right time comes, we all can go home and also bless Africa with the little that we are also having. Most importantly, let me issue this uh, caution to my beautiful African youth. To you, the African youth watching me, to you, the African youth who is a uh, strong, energetic, and exuberant, please, please, I do understand your pride. I do understand your frustration. I do understand whatever it is that you are going through right now as you watch this live broadcast. I know you are fed up with Africa. I know African economy is intimidating you. I know Africa is stressing you up. It is giving you depression. I know you are ready to risk your life to leave Africa. I know you are ready to take every risk possible to make sure you can vanish from Africa. But please, as much as you are desiring to do that, as much as you are committed to do, you are committed into doing that, as much as you have all the determination and you are ready to uh, uh, sacrifice whatever it will take, please, please, I'm issuing this caution. It is not worth it to go through the Libyan desert. It is not worth it to go through the Sahara desert. It is not worth it to go through the harshness of our life in Libya. It is not worth it to go through the Mediterranean Sea in the hope of reaching Europe, a continent that you barely know nothing about. Please, sometimes the life that most of the people or most Africans that are finding themselves in Europe are videoing and are showing to you know you go there and you will realize that life is a mirage so please i beg you my dear african youth please i love you i do understand your frustration and i share your sentiment i used to be in your shoes i was once in africa i was once in ghana it was frustration it was intimidation it was poverty it was lack of economic opportunity it was lack of jobs it was lack of employment it was lack of a neighboring environment that compared me to leave Ghana, that compared me to get out of Ghana. So I do share your sentiments. But as much as I do share, please make sure if you want to travel outside Africa, travel through the legal means. Travel through the legal means. Please, please, I beg you. Your life is precious. Your life means a lot to me. Please, I don't want you to waste your life. I don't want you to die in seek of economic opportunity. Please. Don't go and waste your life in the Mediterranean Sea. Please, don't go and waste your life in the Sahara Desert. Please, don't go and waste your life in a foreign land that you barely know nothing about. Please, try as much as possible that in 2022, if you would want to travel outside Africa, do the travel in legal way. Do the travel in legal way. And if some, some somebody may ask me, what is the legal way to do the travel? I've, 
uploaded a lot of videos on Africa My Heritage TV. That is talking about legal ways of traveling outside Africa. Please go and watch this video. And the video can be a pointer to you. It can direct you as to the direction that you would need to take right now in making a legal journey outside Africa so that you don't go through this uh, route to risk your life. God bless you for uh, paying heed to this my advice. Now, we are still on the 2022 uh, African Cup of Nations. That is currently ongoing in the nation of Cameroon. As I said, the 2022 African Cup of Nations has been competitive. It has been engaging. It has been cagey. And it has, it has lived up to the expectation that we as Africans were expecting it to be. We are attracting the international uh, attention. We are having the international knowledge and the audience following the African tournament is so good and it's so amazing. The euphoria and the ecstasy behind this tournament is something that I can never sleep and uh, not even think of waking up to uh, follow the tournament again. So we bless the African continent. We bless the Confederation of African Football for being able to put out this tournament in the midst of the COVID-19 outbreak. Now, as you all know, we are still following up on the matches that is still ongoing in the uh, uh, various groupings in the uh, 2022 African Cup of Nations. As you know, we were uh, already... We already cleared all the matches that were played in all the groupings. Uh, we already cleared the first matches that were played in all the groupings. And today we are going to the second match that is currently ongoing in all the groupings. So today, the group that we are going to look at is uh, from uh, Group D going. Uh, from uh, uh, We will look at Group C and also going to, we are also going to look at Group D. So without wasting any match, now let's just go straight to the Group D. So the Group D encounter, the Group D encounter was between... Uh, uh where is it let's just go and look at the match day two yes so we are still on the match day two okay so now uh we are going to look at the match that was played between nigeria and sudan and at the same time guinea bissau and egypt first let's go to the nigerian match so the nigerian match uh, was played in uh, Roundy uh, Jaya Stadium. The Nigerian match was was staged or uh, was played in uh, Roundy uh, Jaya Stadium in uh, I think in in Yaoundé. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, and as I said, it was staged between uh, Nigeria and Sudan. And after the 90 minutes of uh, quality playing time, Nigeria scored three goals as against one goal on the Sudanese side. Nigeria scored three goals as against one goal on the Sudanese side. So let's look at the goal scorers uh, on the Nigerian side. So uh, the uh, first goal scorer was uh, Samuel uh, Chukwinzi. The first goal scorer on the Nigerian side was uh, Samuel uh, Chukwinzi on the third minute. And the uh, second goal on the Nigerian side was scored by Tawo uh, Awuniyi. Tawo Awuniyi on the 45th minute. On the 45th minute. And the Third goal on the Nigerian side was scored by Moses Simon. Moses Simon on the 46 minutes, and the only consolation goal that the Sudanese had was scored on uh, the 70th minute by a player by name uh, Wali Adin uh, Kedra. Uh, Wali Adin Kedra. So let's just go straight and look at the post-match statistics. Let's go straight and look at the post-match statistics. So uh, after the 90 minutes of our quality playing time, these were the shots that were. Uh, taking throughout the 90 minutes. Uh, so on the Nigerian side, they have 17 shots as against five shots on the Sudanese side. Let's look at the shot on target. There were eight shots on target on the Nigerian side as against two shots on target on the uh, Sudanese side. Let's look at the game possession. So Nigerian dominated the game with 59% uh, of the possession as against 41% uh, of the possession on the Sudanese side. Let's look at the passes. So there were 528 passes on the Nigerian side as against 386 passes on the Sudanese side. Let's look at the pass accuracy. Uh, there were 84 pass accuracy on the Nigerian side. That's against 79% pass accuracy on the Sudanese side. Let's look at the fouls that were committed throughout the 19 minutes. So there were seven fouls uh, committed on the Nigerian side. That's against 16 fouls committed on the Sudanese side. So clearly, the Sudanese sides were very physical. So they took a lot of, uh, they, they committed a lot of fouls. So I was even surprised they, 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 they were no uh, yellow cards uh, to the Sudanese side, but yes. The Nigerian side had one uh, yellow card. So let's look at the yellow card. So there were one yellow card on the Nigerian side as against zero yellow card on the Sudanese side. Let's look at the 
record. So there were zero record on both of both teams. Let's look at the outside. So Nigerian has zero outside. That's against uh, one outside on the Sudanese side. Let's look at the corners. There were three corners on the Nigerian side. That's against two corners on the Sudanese side. So as I said, this was a Group D match. So this was a Group D match. This was a Group D match. It was a, a second game in Group in, in match day two of three that were played. So this was a first game that was played in Group D between Nigeria and Sudan. That uh, Nigeria was able to score to number three goes to one. So we, we are now we cannot just go straight and look at the uh, standings of the table because we have to go and consider the uh, second match first. So after considering the second match, I will come back uh, with you again to do the video on the standings and the table after the second match in uh, Group D in 2022 African Cup of Nations. As I said, the stadium that hosted this match is Rwanda uh, Gia Stadium. As I said, most importantly, I don't do the line-up with respect to dead matches because the match has already been played. It's a dead match, so there is no need for me to do the line-up. But with the live matches, I mostly do the line-up. So thank you, my followers. God bless you. Please, if you haven't subscribed yet to Africa My Heritage TV, please, click on the subscription button and after clicking on it click on the notification bell also and once you click on the notification bell a menu a menu would pop up when the menu pop up click on all notifications so clicking on all notifications simply means that whatever videos i will be uploading going forward you will be among the first people to also receive it and to also watch and please after watching the video to like the video if you like the video that you have watched it triggers the youtube algorithm in promoting the video further to enable all africans in diaspora to be able to follow the african cup of nation and please uh, bring forth your comments and suggestions too so that whatever that we are doing uh, we will know uh, uh, the, uh, the, the parts that we are on, whether, as, whether we are doing a good, a good or great way, so what we are doing is not praising our viewers or our followers or our subscribers, because mind you, we are here purposely because of our subscribers, so if we are uploading videos that is not making you happy, that is not uh, keeping you entertained, that is not keeping you informed, that is not uh, uh, encouraging and that is not inspiring you, then what is the purpose of we being here? So your comments and your suggestions means a lot to us, so please make sure you bring forth it, uh, make sure you always leave it on beneath of the video, after watching it. God bless you and thank you. I will see you again on the next video.